Hello everyone and welcome to a very nice game that was played in the Aeroflot uh, Open Tournament in 2004. It's a game between Magnus Carlsen, uh, who was 13 years of age at the time, and um, a very strong grandmaster, Sergei Dolmatov, who uh, is a former world champion himself in 1977, uh, or rather in 1978 uh, he won the World Junior Championship, some uh, half a point ahead of Artur Yusupov. Uh, but uh, okay, Magnus knew that he was facing a former world champion, but Dolmatov did not know that he was facing a future world champion and uh, yes I am recording this as today is Magnus Carlsen's 32nd birthday so you guys are welcome to uh, wish him uh, all the best in the comments if, if you if you like uh, and also sorry about no videos for the past two days uh, I just couldn't um, I use my voice every time I uh, I tried to speak uh, you know I, I just started squeaking it was really weird uh, so it was impossible to make a video but now my voice uh, is much better as you can hear uh, and uh, this is a nice game that I'm uh, going to show for, for Magnus's birthday. It's a very short one, but you guys will enjoy it, especially, uh, like I said, since against such a, such a strong opponent. Uh, if you just saw this game, you, you would think that it's against someone who is not a very strong player. Uh, but he had a very, very uh, lucrative chess career, uh, you know, uh, opponents-wise, uh, regarding how, how strong opponents he beat, as he defeated some great names like uh, Artur Yusupov, Alexander Belyavsky, he defeated Spielman, he defeated Paul Gavsky, he even defeated uh, Gary Kasparov in a team event in 1977, uh, one year prior to him winning the World Junior Championship. It was a wild game of the Queen's Gambit decline. He defeated Kasparov with uh, black. Uh, Kasparov sacrificed a piece for, for two pawns. He had two connected pass points on the queen side uh, but uh, Dolmatov defended well uh, and uh, he was able to uh, utilize his advantage to grab a full point so uh, definitely a, a strong player he was crushing you know world-renowned players before Magnus was even born uh, but uh, like I said he doesn't know he's playing against a future world champion and a potential the, the greatest of all time so let's see how the game went Magnus had the white pieces and he opens with knight to f3 he goes for the reti opening and Dolmatov goes for pawn to f5, going for the sort of a Dutch reply to the Reti. We have d3, d6, and pawn to e4. Now Magnus strikes in the center, pawn to e5, and now knight to c3. So Dolmatov going for full development here. He doesn't want to hold anything back. Knight to c6. We have e captures on f5, as this was considered strongest at the time. It is still considered strongest today. E captures on f5. Bishop captures on f5, and now pawn to d4. This loss of a tempo uh, is excused because uh, if pawn captures knight captures the bishop on f5 will be hanging so black will have to either move the bishop or trade and then white gets a queen to the beautiful d4 square. Uh, so instead we have knight captures on d4, knight captures, e captures and queen captures. And now okay the bishop stays on f5 but the Magnus's queen is beautifully developed on d4. And now knight to f6. Uh, nowadays c6 is considered to be the more precise way to play this but okay it's not a very uh, common line knight to f6 we have bishop to c4 and now pawn to c6 and here bishop to g5 so you can see that even though black uh, uh, doesn't struggle with developing his pieces he can develop uh, pieces freely like it's very rare that you will see black being able to develop both of his bishops uh, but it's very it's, it's not all that easy to play and he is behind in development and also the d6 pawn is a bit weak if he can play d5 he's going to be perfect fine and uh, uh, interestingly there is a game that was played 10 years after this game between Maxime Vacher Lagrave and uh, Anatoly Vassier uh, where h6 was played and the Maxime won that game very nicely with the white pieces but here we have pawn to b5 and it is now as of move 10 that this position has never been reached again uh, and the Magnus has to make a choice. He goes bishop back to b3. Uh, I will just show for fun how g4 could be a very, very uh, tricky move to face with black. Because if bishop to d7, you play bishop to d3. And now black has to be extremely careful how to continue this game. He has to go for bishop to e7 and castles. Uh, because if you go for c5, which kind of is the idea, you want to expand your pawns as, as much as possible. Queen e3 check and there's not all that much you can do. If queen to e7, you're going to play bishop e4 and attack the rook uh, on, on a8. And if queenside castles, you're going to go queenside castles. And the black's position is just terrible now uh, with the pawns so far advanced. If b4, queen to d3, and you can already resign this as black. Uh, so... Uh, a possibility. Uh, uh, g4 really uh, go goes for some uh, complications. But Magnus goes for bishop to b3. And now we have bishop to e7. 
And bishop to e7 really makes life uh, difficult for, for Sergei. Uh, he should play h6 or queen to e7 check. Basically, he should play both of those moves uh, as queen to e7 check uh, comes with a tempo. Uh, but he goes for bishop to e7 and now uh, Magnus just castles queenside and there is no good way for black to play this. The bishop here prevents castles. The d6 pawn is weak. You can't really move and you know that rook h to e1 is coming. So queen to d7 is played. Uh, Sergei hopes to castle uh, his king to safety queenside but now rook h to e1 and even though castling queenside is possible here look at this if castles queenside a4 and what can you do here uh you can you can't push b4 and the queen covers that square and if you capture queen captures and this i mean it looks disgusting for black uh, so instead after rook h to e1 King to d8 is played, trying to get the king out of harm's way, uh, trying to go for king to c7, but now Magnus just goes for rook captures on e7, probably the move I will use uh, for the thumbnail, and there is no good way to recapture. If you capture with the king, uh, sort of to defend the d6 pawn, uh, look at this, bishop captures on f6, g captures and rook to e1 check, forces the king away from the pawn, and once you move the king, queen captures on f6 check, and that's it. You either lose the rook or you try to defend the rook by connecting the rooks and then rook to e7 will cost black the queen. So after rook captures on e7, queen captures on e7 was played and now queen to f4. Again, uh, made possible because this weird bishop on f5 is undefended. This comes with tempo and now the bishop is hanging and also the d6 pawn is hanging. So Sergei tries to combine this with bishop to d7, tries to hold on to everything. And now while Magnus could just capture the pawn here, he goes for knight to e4 absolutely crushing a triple attack on the f6 square also more pressure on the d6 square and of course uh, if some of you are new to chess you cannot capture the knight because after queen captures the knight is pinned the knight cannot move so after knight to e4 the only thing that seems to be playable for black is d5 uh, which uh, forces the knight to move, which cuts off the bishop from this beautiful diagonal, which closes off the d-file, but that's, um, uh, even without all that, Magnus is still completely winning. Magnus plays knight captures on f6, and there is no way to recapture. If g captures, then bishop captures, wins the queen. So in the game, h6 was played bishop to h4 and to g5. Now it seems that Sergei will win back his piece, but now Magnus just centralized with queen to d4, and he was in this position, unmoved 19, that uh, Sergei Dolmato resigned the game as there is nothing more to be done here. Uh, problem is you're, you're down a full piece and if you try to recapture the piece well then the game goes on but it's just completely unplayable. I, was, I will just show you one fun line uh, that is possible knight captures on d5. Now attacks the queen and also the rook is hanging and if you play queen to f8 to defend both now you can play queen captures on h4 check. The knight covers both e7 and c7 you're gonna play king c8 now knight to e7 check. If king to c7 you're gonna play queen to g3 check king d8 and now knight captures on c6 again with check the bishop is pinned so king to c8 and now knight to e5 again uh, attacking the bishop twice not, not nothing for black to do the only square where you can put the bishop uh, seems to be the e8 square and now you've disconnected everything i mean look look at your back rank this is uh, something you would see in a, in <laughs> i don't know in an ivanchu kasparov game uh, but let's say queen g4 check king to b8 and now just rook to d8 with with check king to b7 and we can even finish off with a bang uh, rook to d7 check bishop captures queen captures with check king to a6 and now queen to c6 check king a5 knight to c4 check we're gonna sacrifice everything because this is a made up line b captures on c4 and now of course a forced check made him four queen to c7 check king b5 a4 with check King to b4, uh, king to b4, queen captures, king a5, and now queen to b5 will be checkmate. So that's basically what would follow if um, uh, Sergei continued the game after Magnus played queen to d4 or something similar, uh, but of course he did not. So uh, that's why I told you uh, how, how strong of a player Sergei Dolmatov was uh, and is. Okay, he's retired now, but... Uh, uh, I mean, he, he pretty much defeated everyone, even, even, even Kasparov, but... Um, uh, yeah, uh, even though he, he did well in the tournament and uh, Magnus did not crush everyone in that tournament, he was still only 13 years of age, uh, but this game in 19 moves crushing um, a strong grandmaster like this definitely uh, something that I thought we should show as this is, not, this is a game that I still haven't shown uh, on the channel. Uh, so yeah, 
a brilliant game by by the 13 year old Magnus Carlsen against such a such a, a, a very strong grandmaster hope you guys enjoyed that and yeah uh, feel free to uh, wish Magnus a, a very happy 32nd birthday in, in the comments if you guys are into that uh, as uh, it, it's always nice to you know uh, congratulate people and wish them birthdays uh, so yeah, uh, that's the game. Hope you guys uh, enjoyed it. Uh, yeah, so, so, like I said, sorry about no videos for the past uh, two days, but my voice uh, simply refused to cooperate. But uh, as uh, uh, the, the, there's a lot of stuff that's happening in the chess world, feel free to use hashtag suggestion. I will go over your suggestions and show the, the uh, only the, the very best of games. Uh, so yeah, once again, hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, I would like to wish a very happy birthday to Pepa Pepic and also uh, I would like to wish a very happy birthday to Grisha Derevolas, Derevolas and I would like to thank Ravishing Reptiles YouTube, Jerry Driver and Borna Smith for your contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot, I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching and I will see you soon, continuing to check up on everything that's happening in the chess world and of course your excellent suggestions. Uh, thank you all, I will see you soon and have an excellent rest of your day.